Welcome to Fluent and Chill. I'm Anthony K. I'm here as always with my main man, Jermaine from Chill Town Hoops. Jay, how you doing, man? What's going on, brother? What's you know, I love it. I, I'm, I'm happy and I'm sad. Mm-hmm. I'm happy because there's a bunch of stuff going on in the NBA. This is the mm-hmm. NBA edition, by the way, if you didn't know. Um, but I'm also nervous. So we're going to get into COVID and what it means to the NBA. We're going to talk about LaMelo Ball starting mm-hmm. in the All-Star game. All right, talk about that. Steve Kerr named the head coach of USA Basketball. You love it. You love it. I hate it. I'll tell you why, and he'll tell you why. But we're going to start. Last week, I was a little hard on the centers. I don't, I don't mean to be hard on centers on big men. I, I, I like big that's men. A, that's an understatement, and no, he doesn't. So I, I, like, I like the big man. I think it's an important part of the game. I always, much like you, wished I was seven foot one. <laughs> and that I could just drop step, bam. I wish I could. I can't. I couldn't. I would have loved to have done that. So that being said, I got a lot of feedback about, okay, you're a little hard on the centers. Can you guys talk about your top five centers of all time? So that's where we're going to start this week. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, I'm going to let you go first. Uh, top five centers of all time. Kind of give me a why. Who's on the fringe? And then I'm going to ask you a follow-up question because – I want to know if there's anybody currently that might jump into that top five spot. My top five, five men of all time at the top. I got Jabal, Chamberlain, Russell, Lajuan, Diesel. Those are my top five centers. And is that the order? In that order. In, sure. in, in that order. And I got I got Jabal because you can make the argument that in terms of a career. There is nobody who's come close to what Jabal has done from high school to college to the professional ranks. There is nobody who has come close to what he has done. He was absolutely amazing from the beginning to the end. He invented, and and, and I always say this when anytime I talk to people about Jabal and people talk about versatility of the five men. Yeah, one move. Stop this and you stop me. He played 20 years. No stop. Yeah, that's all. And he, I, he, I think he, he could still score like 10 right. points a game now. <laughs> yeah, what yeah, one move. Stop this and you stop me. He played 20 years and no, and his record still stands to this day as the all-time leading scorer in NBA history from 1984. So we'll start there. He was incredible as a rebounder. He was absolutely phenomenal in the fast break. Jabal got up and down the floor with the best of them as an athlete. He was tough as nails. And a lot of people don't give Jabbar nearly as much credit for his ability to pass. He had a he had a he had a stretch where where he went 30, 15. He averaged almost four assists, which is incredible for a big man. Just so you know. So Jabbar was and, and I caught Jabbar on the back end of his prime. I didn't catch right. Jabbar like like Joel M B today or guys like that. No, I didn't. Um my second guy is Chamberlain, who my co-host here thinks never really existed. He thinks that he's like uh Medusa or Greek mythology or anything like that. I I believe more in uh, what was his alter ego, Marcus Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think he's more real than Will Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain, he, my, my my co-host here, he doesn't believe that Will scored hundred points. Which, by the way, I want to I want to get into something really quick. Really, oh, sorry, fast. I said Marcus Robinson, George Marcus. Excuse George me, George Marcus. George, That's George his... Marcus was his alter ego. So 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 Tone has Tone has an issue with Will Chamberlain going twenty eight for thirty two from the stripe. I do. That, that, he, he's got a problem with that. Which, by the way, Tom, that was his highest free throw percentage for his career that year. Of so course. is it? Is Hold it? On. That was his highest ever in his. He never shot better ever. than that ever. Ever. Not I don't one. think he hit twenty eight free throws in a season. Get like, now, come on. Now, okay, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that, Tom, because I shoot sixty percent one season. Okay, so throughout the course of an eighty two game season, is it realistic to think that just one time? In that season, I could shoot 80 from the strike. If I shoot 60 all year, could did I shoot, shoot 80? Did he shoot 60? Can I, he shot 60% for the season. Is it realistic to think that I could shoot 80 one time? What, could is, I it real, shoot? is it realistic to think you could shoot 80 one time? Yes, in a low volume game, like if you shot five, you could hit four, sure. Well, well, but but the, the, the odds of you hitting 28, which just happened to be on the night, that you score a hundred. Well, that, that that's my point, Tom. Because that there's there's it, no it, video evidence of. It, 
that, it's, it's, you know, hey, you saw the episode. I, we're not supposed to get into this, but you saw, I don't know if you saw the episode that I did with my guy um, from uh, You Should Know podcast, um, Peyton Harden, who talked about they, the, the photo- they said they stormed the court when he hit his 100th point. Yet the radio version, oh, there's 100 points. And the next play down the court is, hold on. I thought they stormed the court. Why are the radio announcers saying that they didn't storm the court? Why are there no pictures? There were two photographers there. Why are there no pictures of anyone storming there? There's 4,100 people there. 100,000 people say they were there, but there was 4,100 people there. Correct. None of them said they stormed the court, but they said they stormed the court. And there's no pictures. There's a lot of... There's a lot of... uh. Like I said, Tom, I'm trying to figure out if I'm having a career year. For example, your man Kobe Bryant. To answer your question, to answer your question, can you shoot 80% right. of the line one day when you're sh- averaging 60%? Yes, you can. Right, yes, you 90%. Can. Your, yes. your yes. man, Kobe Bryant, is a prime example. Kobe goes for 35 in the season. Is it ridiculous to think that on one night, I got it going, I could get 70, maybe 80 in a, in a game? Is it ridiculous to think that I could do that? If now, I wasn't there, didn't see it, I'd say yes. Right. But, they, uh, but I, can wa- I can go back and watch the video, <laughs> and I can oh. see every single point. I can't do that. Um, <coughs> Chamber, it, Chamberlain. Listen, is it crazy to think? Is it crazy to question things? No, it's not. You have to. In fact, if, you, if I don't, if I to. don't see it, I think it's. I'm a right, curious. I'm, I'm curious, and I think curiosity is good. So I ask questions, Check, and I can't. Well, have and I haven't have gotten. A, I haven't yeah. gotten an answer. Why wasn't there a film crew there? Because they normally film games. Even back then, they filmed games. Why did the radio? Uh, I know we're going way off topic, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, why did the radio um, announce announcers or announce whatever the the radio broadcast? How come it didn't come out till years later? Why? I think a lot. I just I, 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 now. Am I saying there's something wrong? I'm just asking why, and everyone goes ah. Everyone gets defensive. Well, but because but the what game, happens? What happens when you ask stuff. your kid? What happens when you ask your kid a question? They get defensive. Why? You know, they lying. They they lying. Did, ah. yeah, they're, they're lying, absolutely. And they're trying to cover they're trying to cover something up. But this is not that particular situation. Tony, the game got moved somewhere completely different. But I'm getting off topic here. Chamberlain was so yes. good that his numbers with they, they they say that he had he had a down playoff season where for six years he averaged 35 and 20 in the playoffs. And they say that he was he his numbers went down. That's just how good this guy was, right? Every record that's attached, every big time record in the NBA is attached to Wilt Chamberlain. The most rebounds in the game, the most points in the game, the most points per game, uh, the team with the most wins, consecutive wins, Chamberlain, the only team to beat the Celtics in the 60s. Who was on that team? Chamberlain. So this he's he's basically attached to almost yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, when, when we take look, I say this, you know, I say some of this stuff half tongue in cheek, right? When you take away that from it, what he did in his career, right? It's so phenomenal that it makes it easy to question if it was real because some of the numbers are just so far and beyond what anyone else could imagine okay. doing. It's it's a, crazy. A prime example is you, Tone. The dude scored 100 in the game. You're like, no, he didn't. No, that I didn't can't, it's, yeah. I, 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 I believe this. I believe that. No, he did not do that. No, that yeah. did not happen. That's how, that's how phenomenal. You know, <laughs> right. I, you know, I brought up George Marcus as a joke, but he was a high school kid playing pro ball, putting up like 60, 70 points a game. For real, yo. He, when I think about when I think about Bill Russell, right? When I think about Bill Russell, I think about a guy who was just transcendent. He he was the difference in everything that we did. And not only was he the difference, a lot of people talk about his his inability to score. I mean, Russell did average 20 and 20 twice in the playoffs. Uh, so so that that's a big deal. And a lot of people talk about his field goal percentage. Well, Tone, that was the going rate during that time. It wasn't like he was shooting 42% and everybody else was shooting 56 or 58. No, that was the going rate during that time. And the, the best example that I give people is, I'd like for you to imagine Rudy Gobert playing for the Utah Jazz and coaching them to the NBA championship. How would that go today? That wouldn't go. It, it, I put out, that, I put out, I put out a stat. One to tease, <laughs> and then one to like give you give people a reality check. So the tease one, like to bother people, was Steph Curry. And we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about Steph Curry today, too, yes, by the way, and, and his three-point record that he broke. I forgot to mention that. But uh for for his career, I think he shoots like 43 and a half percent from mm-hmm. three for his career 
Michael Jordan played six, uh, sorry, 13 seasons for the Bulls and won six championships, which is Mm -hmm. 46.1%. So the odds of Jordan as a Bull winning a championship, the percentage was higher (laughs) than what Steph Curry hits from three. Mm -hmm. So that got people a little riled up. And then I said, but let me give you some more perspective. Michael Jordan shot 85 point something percent from the free throw line. Mm -hmm. Bill Russell in his 13 seasons with the Celtics went to the NBA final 12 times, won it 11, which was 86 point something percent. So the likelihood that Jordan who could shoot free throws with his eyes closed, getting a free throw, the chances that he won a champ that Bill Russell won a championship was higher than Jordan hitting a free throw. Think about that. Think about that. Think and you're and that. he coached them one. You're right. Like that is just what he did as a winner, as a player, as yeah. a leader. Mm-hmm. We don't get we don't there's no box, there's no stat for leadership. No, it's but not. if there was, if there was like a an NBA 2K rating for leadership, and maybe there is, right? He shouldn't get a hundred. It, it, his should be like 125 or something because it's, it's the, Russell didn't say anybody else. And the players on his team said once he came in. You say this all the time. Once he came in, that's it. We knew we were winning. He was the difference. He, he we knew we were going to win. Yep, he was the difference in what we and what we were doing. Lajuan is is number four on my list, and and <clears throat> when I think about him, uh, one of the most complete five men that I've ever seen, both on the offensive and defensive end of the basket, basketball, the ability to rebound, <clears throat> his athleticism, the ability to guard a number of different positions. Lajuan was phenomenal. Now a lot, a lot of people get. A lot of people get give him heat on what he did in the playoffs. But, Tone, every every great player has that. So, during that time, the problem was Phoenix had a problem with Houston. Houston had a problem with Seattle. Seattle had a problem with Phoenix. So, it was basically whoever you could avoid, that would be – that's that's the way that would work. Because if I, if I remember correctly, I think that Seattle beat Houston – I think they beat them six times in 10 years in the playoffs. They own them. And that sometimes was the- teams, sometimes teams <laughs> just have your yeah. number, right? They, and they own them. And Kenny, Kenny Smith, he had such a difficult time with Gary Payton, but it had nothing to do with how good Olajuwon was. Cause Olajuwon was awesome. I thought he should have, he had, he had a legit shot to win defensive player of the year in 89, even in 88 when Jordan won it, even though Jordan went 200 blocks, 200 steals and hundred blocks. Olajuwon had a legit shot to win it then. And then the year after that, but, when I think about his ability to score the basketball, his ability to rebound the basketball, him as a leader also, how he grew into that role. I just thought that he was – I thought he was phenomenal. And the last one would be Shaq. And Shaq was – a lot of people – a lot of people don't – they take – they take – they discount how much brute force Shaq just was, how unstoppable he was, strictly because of that. Shaq was basically a Mack truck with – and he, he, he was just – Force and there was really nothing that you could do. It wasn't a, he 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 had some grace to him, but for the most part, Shaq was just brute force, and there was really nothing that you could do with him. I I expected Shaq to be a little bit better than what he was, and that's why I rate him as low as I do. Considering how awesome he really was, I thought he could have been so much better. So let me ask you a question. Because Shaq in his prime, and I have Shaq, Shaq ranked higher than you uh, in the top five. So I'll just, yeah, I'll, I'll tell, let me ask a question, then I'll, I'll say mine. So if Shaq in his prime, Orlando, Laker, Heat, if he wins that championship with the Heat and then retires, are you thinking differently of Shaq? Because when you compare him to the Russells, let's say, who played 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. Is it that last, you know, that Boston, Phoenix, Cleveland, is that diminishing how you, I know it diminishes what other people see Shaq as like younger people who saw more of the tail end, right? Who saw him 10 points a game, you know, in Cleveland, they're like, he's not a big deal. All he does is dunk, right? They don't remember him taking a rebound, going coast to coast, uh, and breaking the backboard, like you know, like some other people do. Do you think those later years hurt his legacy? You can make that argument, Tom, because he became a journeyman. And at that point, after after they won the NBA championship in 06, that would have been year 14, and he would have been done. Now, he wouldn't have been the, the – I, I don't think he would have been in the top five all-time in scoring in NBA history. No. But – I think that his legacy might have been might have been quite different because he would have retired on top, 
going to yeah. the NBA Finals, you figured that would have been five trips in seven years, winning four. That's pretty impressive for a guy making an All-NBA team, what, 12 times? It would have been 12 times in 14 years. I mean, he did make the All-NBA team in Phoenix, but – Shaq was a shell of himself after that, going to Phoenix. But, but that's and that's what I mean. I think we that we we see that Shaq yeah. too, and we put it into the mix because I think at year fourteen he played the same number of years as Russell, mm-hmm. right? Um, granted, you know, f- still four four championships, like you said, seven trips to the finals, one of only what three teams to ever three peat, mm-hmm. right? He yep. was the best player on those Lakers teams with Kobe. Okay, he was the yep. second best player in Miami, but still, mm-hmm. still don't like. I love Wade, but Wade doesn't win. The Heat don't win without Shaq. No, they don't. Um, so I, I think it does hurt him a little bit. You can make that argument, Tone, absolutely, because you think about a guy who and, – and a lot of guys – that's going on today, too, with a lot of guys where they turn into journeymen, and it looks it just looks bad on their resume. Because like, to see Shaq put on that Boston Celtic uniform, he was he was clearly washed. He was oh, done. Yeah, yeah. Point. He was out of shape. He was yeah. – I, I get it. You still – I listen – Anyone who's played sports, you know, when that's when that fires inside you, you still yeah, you want to still play it. And, and, and I get it, right? Yeah, like, hey, let's on. be honest. There's he's not the only one. Like, if Jordan doesn't play for the Wizards, right? Like, don't yeah. get, like just think about his legacy. He's great. If he never played for the Wizards, it might actually even be. And don't get me wrong, he didn't play horrible for the Wizards, but I still think it. You know, I maybe it's maybe it's just me. Like, I like seeing Kobe start a Laker, retire a Laker. I right. like seeing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot a as a raptor. Yeah. You know, uh and, just, and at the end too. It wasn't like yeah. he got traded to the Raptors in year six or year yeah, seven. No, no. Lajuan exactly. was over in Toronto. Yeah, he was, he was done. over. So it's those, it's those that you know, Patrick Ewing in Orlando, and I think he played in Seattle too. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah people forget. Yeah, yeah. Like though I I again I understand as a player wanting to do that, still wanting to go out and play. Mm-hmm. But it's just yeah. So so for yeah. me, I've got Jabbar, Chamberlain, Shaq, mm-hmm. Hakeem, and Russ. Nice. And 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 listen, Russ. It's Russ is so hard for me to to rate. One, him, him, and Chamberlain really, because similar to you, at least I saw Jabbar play like mm-hmm. in real time. Wilt and Russ are so hard because I never saw them play. Right. right. I, I'm going by you know what, and I do what I tell people not to. Well, go look at the highlights, which I hate. But that's why it's so hard for us because I'm like most. I I, I look at the offensive side of the ball first because mm-hmm. hey, there's stats. When Russell when Russell was playing, there wasn't necessarily all the defensive stats that we have today. Like I don't even think there were it was it blocks that they weren't even officially counting then. So we don't even know. We see these crazy rebound numbers, mm-hmm. crazy rebound numbers. But I don't know how many blocks, how many charges, what is you know defensive ratings and. And and not that that's the only way to judge people, but it's it does help when you can have like okay, I have a page of stats, I have a page of you know I can go through and watch a hundred games of video, you know I could do all these things, <clears throat> and I can do I can't do that with Russell and Wolf. Right. So that's why when I see seventeen points a game, forty four percent from the field, and I go back like you and I see well okay that was kind of the going rate there. Mm-hmm. Then I look at the team he had, and mm-hmm. I think okay, look, team accolades are important, championships are important. But would he have all those if he was on, you know, what if Wilt was on the Celtics and Russell was on the Warriors? Yeah. Am I still, so I try to do that, right? And then I think, and the last one I think is, okay, if I'm picking a center, so it's, I, I'm drafting, who do I want? And that's, and that's the tough one too, because, right. you know, I, it depends who my other players on the team are. So that's yeah. why, like, I, I know that, that it's so hard to do. Mm-hmm. And that's and I admit, is Russ too high? Is Russ too low? I don't know. Now you got you got to also remember too, Tone, that you know the all league defensive team didn't come out till Russ's last season in the league. That's right. when the first, right. that's when the all league defensive team was was first implemented. That's yeah. number one. Two, it's difficult to put guys and go, yo, well, if you take this guy out and put this guy in, would he be just as good? Well, you got to take under consideration what Russ was for Boston. Russ was. Russ could very well be for Boston what Leonard was in Toronto. So if if Leonard stays in Toronto, do they keep rolling? Now, I think that they do. With that being said, if you take Leonard out of that lineup and you put um, – I'm not going to say LeBron because LeBron was great everywhere. But, you know, somebody else at the small forward spot. KD. You take, or you take KD and put him KD. on that Toronto team. 
do they do the same thing that they're doing? Because Leonard brought something different to that unit. Yeah. yeah. And not, not only did he bring something different to that unit, it worked. I don't know if what KD brought would have worked. Right. No, no, that's and that's and that's why I always have that to, you know, when people say, well, if you put Wilt on the Celtics, they still win. And I'm like, I don't know. Because right. was because Wilt from a skill set, right? I would say had a better had more than Russell did, especially offensively. He right. clearly could do more. But would he have would the chemistry and that fit on the team have worked as well? And that's what I don't know. So so we got so you've got Jabbar Chamberlain, Russell, Hakeem, Shaq. Yep. I've got Jabbar, Chamberlain, Shaq, Hakeem, Russell. Last question. Um, is there a player or players that are either ending their career or starting their career that you could say, you know, if they look, I, it's hard to project to the future, but like, mm-hmm. could you say, man, you know, if Joker does this for 15 years, oh, he might make it into my top five. Like, is there a player that you could see cracking your top five? Tone that top if five. they if they do yeah when you're talking about the when you're talking about the five spots specifically that's going to be tough man because those guys did it on a consistent basis for a long time like they they weren't like Shaq wasn't a four or five year guy you know Chamberlain wasn't a five year guy Jabbar averaged thirty and fifteen for eight straight years you know uh, Elijah was a, he was an all league defender it's 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 very difficult tone when I think about guys today. One, because they move around a lot. And two, because they don't play nearly as much as they did back then. So that's also tough. So it's difficult to accumulate the numbers and get the wins that you would because your team is different and you don't really play that much. So it that's not to say that it can't be done, Tone. That's not to say that it can't be done because prime example would be Steph Curry. You know, I I, I, I thought that somebody would break the I, – I thought that somebody would break the three-point record, but then – Steph Curry was coming along and I saw what he was doing. I'm thinking, yo, this dude might have a shot. He might have a shot to break the record. And he did do it. Now, I don't think that I, I don't think that that's going to be done again. But well, I think with Steph. OK, so we're going to get into Steph right after this with Steph, or at least with the three point record, the game you saw the game right every year. Teams were shooting more and more three. So it was bound to happen. They're using centers less and less now, which is why, which is to my, to my, if I'm answering that question, I'm thinking, I don't know if someone breaks that top five because they're using the center less and less. Now there, there's going to be someone, right? There's going to be someone. Well, wait a minute, Tom. Are they using the center less or are they using them differently? Differently. Differently. Yes. The center position is different than it was. Right. Yeah. So it's not he's not the conventional guy that's on the right. box. That's right. just standing so, underneath. So, and that's going to make it really hard. Like, how do you compare, like, how do you compare a guy that's, you know, shooting threes and racking up assists against the guy who was, you know, down in the block, you know, hitting, you know, I look at Shaq zero to three feet, 75%. That's nuts. That's nuts, right? right? So, but how do you compare that guy getting, you know, 15 rebounds and 25 a game to a guy shooting threes? You know, it's, it's very different. So that's why for me, it's going to be really hard because you're going to be comparing almost different it's almost like different positions. Like they play right. the same position, but it's different. Yeah. So you brought up, you brought up Steph's three point record. And we had talked about what, they, like a couple, last week we talked about when, when's he going to break it? When's he going to break it? We threw out some games. Turns out it was against the New York Knicks. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to start here. Let, I'll go, to, go into how phenomenal that is, but I want to start. Did you see Ray, Ray Allen's face? Yes. He didn't seem very like he didn't seem very happy. <laughs> like you know, like when Ray Allen took over the lead, yeah. I believe from uh was it for Reggie Miller? Was it for yes, Reggie, sir. from Reggie Miller? Reggie legit looked happy for him, right? And I've seen other sports, you know, the you know, the baseball records, and you know, that you <laughs> always bring out the person who's right. I never understood that, by the way. You broke mm-hmm. my record. I'm I'm I I'm with Ray Allen. I'm not really happy about it. However. They always trot them out and they give them some kind of award or something. Everybody's smiling and happy. Ray Allen was kind of like, well, like, you got to remember who you're talking about too, Tone. Ray Allen is the, is the guy who you know he'll hit a three and win the game, and he's still like, but he's also the guy who'll turn the ball over at the end of the game, and he's still like. So Ray Allen's his his facial expression never really changes. So I don't think that he was upset about it at all. I will say that's this: just, just kind of his face. That's just how that's just how he is. Okay. However, you know when you think about. I mean, the record was broken just a couple just last week. And I only had it for 10 years. 
man, it was just 10 years ago that I did it. So it's not like it's a situation where this was held on. It didn't to last very long. Yeah. Right. So this was like 10 years. That's it. So, you know, when I think about a guy like Curry, I personally told <clears throat> I don't think that I'm going to see anybody in my lifetime do it again. I don't think so. Because when I look at what Curry did and when Ray Allen did it, Ray Allen did it in 2010. Yeah, he did it in the 10-11 season. He only played three more years after that. So that he was over at he was he was on the, not only on the other side of it he was just about over same thing with Reggie Miller when he broke it it wasn't that long before he was over steps in the middle Steph of his still got a lot of years left yeah, yeah Steph still got a Steph still got a lot of years left and not a lot of years left Tone he's got a lot of good years left in him where he could still shoot the long ball after his prime is over now the question that I ask is are we going to get to a point Tone where we top out with the long ball? Because we got teams shooting the long ball at 25, 30 times a game, right? Are we the, gonna aver- get- the average is 30, 35, 36 a game, yeah. Are we Are we going to get to 50? Are we going to get to 60? Are, are we going to get to a point where teams are shooting 53s, 63? I mean, because this has to top off at some point. Is that going to be a game that you want to watch? Right, on top of that. That's right, because that's, we question. always know, what, what do the NBA have to balance? Scoring mm-hmm. and entertainment. Yes. Right? We knew in the 90s they needed to do something because scoring was on a 10-year, tr- you know, every year it was going down. Yep. And the game was becoming, I equate it to, for my Canadian fans here, to the NHL, they'd had this thing called the neutral zone trap that just made everything really defensive, really slow, really boring, low scoring. Mm-hmm. Nobody wanted to watch it. And yeah. so they had to do Are we going, to your point, to the other end where just a bunch of guys standing around the three-point line jacking up threes, right. like an all-star game, Right, and that's not entertaining to watch for me. No, like I think me that you need to have balance. Yeah, me neither. Me um, neither. It's interesting because when I saw Ray Allen's face, I thought, I I don't I w- I think it was more like I wish I was playing today, where where I had the green light to just shoot it from wherever because he could do it, just shoot from anywhere on the court that I wanted to at mm-hmm. any at any point, even on a fast break. Mm-hmm. Like, could you imagine Ray Allen pulling up on a fast break and shooting a three? Mm-hmm. But now, be like, yeah, I have the green light to do that. So I think there's a little bit of that. I think he wants us to add in all the threes he hit as Jesus Shuttleworth. So we don't count those. So really, maybe the record's not broken. Uh, we got to add those in. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, what Curry has done, what Curry has been, let me just say this, what Curry's been allowed to do, mm-hmm. I think is so phenomenal um, in the sense that the volume, like I think it was about, because here's the thing. People always, you know, you know, you know me, I always fight with people about Steph Curry changed the game. And I'm like, no, Steph Curry was this, was, was the perfect catalyst for a change in the game. And, and my thing is, cause go back and look when he's under Mark Jackson, who knew like Mark Jackson said, I got the best shooting backcourt in the world. The history has ever seen. He, he knew what he had. I don't think he knew how to coach him. Right. I think he's a good coach, but I, in the end, he, he identified what he had, but he was still trying to have Steph be a point guard, mm-hmm. right? Pass and pass and pass. Because when you look at Curry's stats in those first, I want to say five or six years, mm-hmm. he's not shooting double digit threes per game. No, he's not. It's once Steve Kerr comes in and says, green light, go. And, and it shoots up. So it'd be interesting. One, had Steph Curry been able to do that from day one, what, what a difference we would have seen. I think it would have been But to, to that point, once he got the green light, he, the percentage of them, he, he's not only, you know, one of the top in volume every year, he's also one of the highest percentage, like, made, which is, I can go shoot 10,000 threes, right? You can go shoot 10,000 threes. You got to hit, to yes. hit them, over yes. 40% of them. That's, for your career, by the way, Tom. For your career, at yeah. A, that's, at a high volume. Woo. At a high volume. That's, that's big... the part. That's the part that I'm so impressed by, Steph, is that, mm-hmm. Anyone could look. I'm not saying anyone, but anyone could shoot that number. Not everyone can hit that number, and especially from where he hits them and how he makes them. Yeah, I just you know we have to give him. I have him. So we did a. Someone sent me the four most influential players in basketball history, mm-hmm. and it was Jordan, LeBron, Kobe, and Curry. And I said, and and this is again compliment I get. I I switched out Kobe and LeBron. I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. I took. I took LeBron out and I put in Earl Lloyd. Mm. 
right? And for those that don't know, there was three guys, Cooper, I forget the other guy, and Lloyd. Cooper, I think, was the first one drafted. Then there was one who signed the first NBA contract. But Lloyd was the first black player, in case you don't know, to ever actually play in a game. So I kind of give him credit for the first one to play, although there was Mm -hmm. someone else who was drafted and signed before. He was the first one to play. Mm -hmm. So I think that's – some people push back on it, but I I think it's because they didn't know who Earl Lloyd was. The other one I replaced, and I can't believe I did this because you know how I feel about Kobe. I put Allen Iverson instead of Kobe because of what he did kind of for the culture and the way people dressed and music, Mm -hmm. like just everything he did for them. I left Jordan and Curry. Mm -hmm. I left Curry because – no matter what I think who started the revolution of the three, I know that when I say he was a piece, right? He was part of the change into this three-point shooting era. I know that there's people who think there wasn't a three ball until Curry. Right. That's influential. I know that there's kids who are, you know, <laughs> six one, six two, six three who are like, I can't drop step dunk because I'm not seven one. You know what I can do? I can shoot a three from I the low. Shoot the long ball. Right. That's I drive, amazing. I drive by the parks. Mm-hmm. And and I watch um, kids, and they're not, you know, it used to, when I was a kid, we were just, we were always just trying to dunk, always mm-hmm. just trying to dunk, it's with our tongue out try, trying to dunk. Right That's now, it. they're stepping back, shooting threes. Mm-hmm. My son, yesterday, was playing against my nephew, playing a little ball, mm-hmm. went between the legs, three, game winner, Steph Curry. That's mm-hmm. influential. I can't. Yes. I, I, you know, there's, I leave him in there because I see, I'm not, I listen, I, I don't just think of my opinion. I look at the other. Opinion. Right. So I left him in there. That's huge to make course, every, huh? to make an everyday sure. six footer think I can make the NBA. Cause I can shoot like that. I'm more likely to shoot like Steph than, you know, jump over you or go through you like LeBron. Like, now, let's will, be honest. I will right? tell you this though, Tone, when you think about what these guys have done, I think I, I remember Mark Zuckerberg in, the fate the, in this in the social network where like you said before you mentioned Steph Curry really didn't just change the game more than he advanced he enhanced it right yeah. so it wasn't as because a lot of people don't talk about the fact that you know the Phoenix Suns were doing this they played right. at a high volume and they were shooting the long ball at a high volume but Steph Curry came in and then Clay Thompson showed up Bob Myers had this vision of what the game what the future of the game was so I immediately think about Bob's, I, I immediately think about the Facebook guy where Mark, he, Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg, where he's listening. So we better be nice. Yeah. So he was enthralled in this, uh, in this lawsuit when, where he said about the people who made up Facebook, you had an idea. I had a better one. Right. So right. That's kind of what this was with Steph Curry. You had a great idea. You had a, you had a really good idea. I took your idea and made it better. Yeah. yeah. But I, I didn't did, start it. I didn't start it. I just took your idea and advanced it. That's all. You know what? I I actually said this in one of the conversations. I was like, I was like, listen, Steph didn't start the fire, but boy, did he pour some gasoline. Oh, on it. absolutely, he did. No <laughs> question right? about okay. that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So from Curry breaking a record to his coach, Steve Kerr, mm-hmm. coaching men's USA basketball. You know, I say it's a bad idea. One because. I don't know. I, I I fight with myself for how good a coach Steve Kerr is. And here's why. When, he was, was, when, he, was out, when, he, when he was out, when he was out, Luke Walton came in and looked like a great coach. Mm-hmm. And we know what Luke Walton did in LA and Sacramento. He's yeah. not a great coach. No, he is not. So I wonder, like, is Steve Kerr kind of a reaping the benefits of having Steph Clay Draymond? You know, Iguodala, Sean, like a great, a great Ross, a really like the best shooting backcourt in the world. Mm -hmm. One of the most versatile big men, right? Who can bring up the ball, play defense, you know, ignite, inspire, motivate your team. Role players like Iguodala and Sean Livingston. Like, is he just a Harrison Barnes? I, I, I forget. There's so many. Like people forget how many good pieces there were on that team. Like, did he just do a really good job with a, with a phenomenal roster? So I don't know the answer. So that's why I say, is he the right coach? And I get it. He, Team USA, he's going to have a great roster. So maybe that answers my question. But I just, you know, is, will he, he seems really laid back, mm-hmm. right? And because he has a team, I feel like with Team USA, you need someone who's like Chuck Daly, who's going to get you 
you know, to play together and kind of push you a little bit because mm-hmm. it's easy for Team USA to think, ah, we got this. We got the best talent. And mm-hmm. I think that's where they faltered in the past is that they've sat back and said, ah, we've got this. We've got the most talent. Is Steve Kerr the can Steve Kerr push those buttons, do you think? That's what I question. Maybe right. it's not, maybe I should say it's a bad one. Maybe I say, I just, I question if he's the right guy. For right. Me. Now, I'll tell you what, Tom. There's piano players and there's piano movers. Steve Kerr is a piano player. He's not a piano mover. Just like Phil Jackson. That's where he got that from. He's the guy who I can't discount him making a great decision and picking where he wanted to coach. I can't I what the, the last thing that you want to do is put yourself in a situation where I might not be very good just to prove to people that I'm better than what I am. There's a reason why I mean Phil Jackson after Shaq left, I mean the Lakers weren't very good. The the Lakers were not very good and the, the questions started to arise that you know maybe Phil Jackson isn't as good as we all think he is. You as a, as good as as good of a coach as you are, you're only that good if you got good players around you. And you can mix those players together. Steve Kerr, I I think he's done a great job in, one, getting guys to buy into the system. That's very difficult to do, especially at the pro level. And I think that with USA Basketball, he gets guys to buy into the system strictly because it's bigger than us. And we plan for our country. And the thing that I dig about Steve Kerr and I I, I dig about his system is how everybody is involved. He got that from Phil Jackson. You, you could be the guy, but we aren't going, you aren't going anywhere without us. And you're only going to be as good as we are. So when I think about, when I think about what Steve Kerr has done with the, with the Warriors and picking a great squad and implementing that offense, because Tone, what I see with the, what I see with the Warriors offense, it looks to me like an updated version of the triangle. That's yeah, oh, a hundred percent. It's, it's the triangle mixed with a little, uh, uh, Spurs like Popovich ball movement. That's what it looks like it's, to me. It's, it's like this hybrid between perfect hybrid between the two. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me, and it works because it's not restricting your game. You can still play your game, but whatever it is that you're going to do, it's not ball stopping. Whatever you're going to do, get it done. Two dribbles, three dribbles, get off the ball. Two dribbles, three dribbles, do something with the basketball. And a lot of guys can play in a system like that, as opposed to you know we got a ball stoppage, we got a ball stoppage. Add that to the fact that not only did Steve Kerr play for Phil Jackson, he also played for Pop, too. Mm -hmm. So I think he's an extension of both of these guys, and he's right in the middle because Steve's got some fire to him. You know, Steve will get kicked out of a game, right? Well, yeah, that's true. I I, Honestly, the thing I like is is who he brought on as his assistants. I think Monty and Spolstra are just really good compliments to that. Absolutely. I do like like that part of it. Yeah, he's got some fire to him. He'll get kicked out of a game, but he's also the guy who he won't call a timeout when his team, when the team goes on a 10-0 run. He'll, yo, figure it out. You guys are smart enough. Figure it out. And I dig that about Steve Kerr. Can I, can I tell you, I, there was a coach in at my high school that when when another, when another an opposing team would go on a run, right, he, he would tell us, he would tell us, right, you're the best team. You're, you're the better team. So he would turn his chair. And he would turn his back to the court. Figure it and out. Like, and he'd be like, figure it out. And he'd figure turn it his back. Out. Figure it out. Get a stop. And figure it turn out. His back. Mm-hmm. Figure and it at out. The, and at the time, as a high school kid, you're like, what a jerk. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, that was brilliant. It figure was it out. brilliant. Yeah. And it worked. So, yeah, I think it's a good hire tone. I do. I think it's a okay. really good hire. Yep. Okay. We'll see. I hope. Because they haven't looked great. They haven't mm-hmm. looked great recently. All right. So, from a bunch of all-stars playing for Team USA to a player that you think will be starting in the all-star game, that if you had asked me five years ago, I would say none of these boys will be in the NBA just because their dad's crazy. But you think LaMelo Ball, one of the Ball brothers, will be starting in this year's all-star game. 20, February 2022. They, Why? He, I, think he, I think he's going to be starting in the All-Star game. Number one, Charlotte is a lot better than what everybody thought they were going to be. And the reason why is because of him. Not to mention, his popularity is through the roof. you got to remember what the All-Star game, the starting five is. Yep. It's a popularity yeah. contest. And with the fan votes, LaMelo Ball is one of the – he might be – he. when you think about Charlotte, the first guy you think about is him. 
So when I think about, I, I bet you most people would have a hard time thinking of any other players in Charlotte. They, like, I, I bet unless you, unless you're paying attention and talking. Right. About it. Yeah. If you don't watch basketball that much, if you're the casual yeah. fan and somebody yeah. asks you to name five guys on the Charlotte Hornets, the first guy you say is Lamelo Ball, and then it would be uh, uh, uh that's it, right? Yeah, that's so, right. so we're talking about a guy who averages almost twenty and ten. I know that's nuts to say, but yeah, he averages almost twenty and ten. Charlotte is 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 a legit playoff team primarily because of him. And his popularity is through the roof. I even want to take it a step further than that, Tone. If he was playing a little bit better, if he was playing just a little bit better, so if that 13 was 16, the Ball brothers would be starting in the All-Star game. The if brothers? The Ball brothers would be starting in the All-Star game. I know that sounds nuts, Tone. Even though, even though DeMar DeRozan is... I, I got him in the MVP votes. I, I, I got can we, him. I got, can we shift the mark to the to the forward? Because hey. I would love. I would love. Because there's enough people in Chicago, like I that to see Lonzo and Lamelo playing starting in the back. Now, listen, they'll probably both be at some point in the game because right. I think they'll both be on the. T- um, they might play together, which yep. that's you know what that's that's pretty amazing. I will tell you this, Tone. You just said it yourself. Five years ago, when this dude Lavar Ball told us. I know what you see in my son Lonzo and how good he is. I got a younger boy who's better than him. <laughs> we all thought he was nuts. In fact, why are you talking to us? Why are you even involved in this? You shouldn't even be involved in this. Only except, not only should he have been involved in this, this dude is like Nostradamus. I'm trying to tell you guys. Is he, is he, or did he, as he said, did he speak it into existence? I don't think he <laughs> spoke it into existence because I saw. I saw footage of him working his kids out, and he pumped them. He pumped that confidence into them. The one thing about LaMelo Ball that I appreciate more than anything is his confidence. He steps on the floor, and he thinks that he's better than everybody else. There is nobody else out here who can do what I do as well as I do it. I'm the man out here. And Listen, I'll, I'll tell you, if, his, if their dad wasn't so outlandish, we probably would have believed him then. But when, you know, when he says stuff like, I'll take Michael Jordan one-on-one, and yeah. you average like two points a game <laughs> in college, like okay, yeah. you're thinking you're crazy, right? Yeah. So it was all those other things. I think yeah. he's gonna be he's a better passer than Magic. Mm-hmm. Listen, I like Lonzo. He ain't a better passer than Magic. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's there's I think there's there's a level <laughs> of like if he would have stopped here, would have been like yeah, but he kind of took it to that as you can see. Yeah. I'm off camera, yeah. <laughs> you know. So I think I think, but but you know what though, again. Looking back, now I'm like, wow, you know what? I thought he was a fool, but he might be a genius. Yeah. Because what did he do? He, Like you said, he pumped up the confidence in his kids. They mm-hmm. thought they could do anything, which always helps. You know what else he did? Where was our attention? It wasn't oh. on the kids. No, it, it was on him. Mm-hmm. How good is that? Right? Mm-hmm. Like a great coach. What does a great coach do before a big game? He makes it about him so that the players can just do focus on their job yep. and let 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 me like let me be the person that you're asking all the questions to. Mm-hmm. Damn, that cool. that man might be a genius. I'll that man cool. might be. I can't believe I just said that. Mm-hmm. He might if he did it on purpose. He may he may have just fallen into it as yep. well. But he might he might be a genius. Mm-hmm. Are we going to have an all star game? I think we will, Tom. I, I, the, the good thing about this COVID situation is we've already experienced it. So it's not something that's new. So it is something that they know how to deal with. Now I had some people ask me that, is it possible to go back into the bubble? No, it's not possible because you're talking about accommodating all 29, 30 teams. And that's not, that's unrealistic to think that you can do that. So that's not going to happen. However, they've taken the necessary measures in terms of safety to make sure that we, and 97% of the league is vaxxed, so that's important. And they've taken the necessary measures to make sure that everybody is safe. So, you know, you got a guy sitting out a game or two games. You got a guy sitting out a game just for safety protocol, which does make a lot of sense, as opposed to, you know, this thing, we don't know what it is. We have no idea. Like, like last year, I'm sorry, in, in, in 1920, when the, in the 1920 season, when the league shut down, we didn't know what this thing was. We had no idea how 2020. to handle it. Sorry, 2020. Sorry. 2020. I'm sorry. Yeah. 1920. I don't, I don't remember yeah. that season. Right. I don't remember. I was thinking of 1920. <laughs> uh, 19, I, or you're saying the 19. The, the 1920. 1920 season. 2019, yes. 2020 yes. season. I wasn't around for the 19. 
I don't know who was playing in that league. That that, that that's, I might have made that league. Yeah, I might have made that league too. But, <laughs> but when I think about it, Tone, I think about how much further we've come from March of 2020 to now in yeah. terms of the safety protocol and how much now we might have a stoppage for a week. Just because it because you know the NHL, as an example, the NHL, the National Hockey League. Yeah, um, has has kind of paused their season. Yeah, and so that's why I asked, will there be an All Star game? Because I think last year it was that we didn't really do the whole All Star weekend. Right, kind of, they flew them in, they played the game, they flew them out. Right, I don't know how many people liked that. Right, um, especially the players. So right. that's why I asked, do you think there'll be a game or? I mean, All Star weekend. All Star weekend is a huge part of the NBA. That's that, yeah. that's a big deal. And, and they did a great job that. building it. Yeah, right? absolutely. People want to see that. But I think it's different now. We've come a long way from March of 2020 till now, and it's not ridiculous to think that you know we might have, like you just said, we might have a pause for a week, yeah. maybe even two weeks. But I think that that would just be just to just to get our ducks back in a row and get people back in order to make sure that we're doing things the right way as opposed to we're going to shut the league down for the rest of the season until we figure this out. Well, we've already been there, so we know how that works. So that's not a situation where we're – and on top of that, from a business standpoint, I mean, we're not really interested in, 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 in losing money like that again. No, for sure. We're not interested in doing that again. That's why we, that's why we already saw it and we knew and we know what exactly we can do this time to avoid that. So do they, do they – do you think they make it mandatory? You have to be vaxxed to play. And then as a player, you know, I always I always fight with this one because I listen, I get it. Everyone has their right to make a decision whether mm-hmm. they want to get you know, get vaccinated or not. But at the same time, as an employer, I also have the right to say, hey, if you want to play in my league and make millions of dollars, this is what I'm gonna ask of you. So do you think they kind of tighten up some of those protocols? Um, or is it just, are they at the point you think where they've kind of got, cause here's the thing we're getting into, you know, replacement players. You know, I've, I was telling you earlier, I've got like 10 players on my, on my, on my fantasy team that are out with COVID. Like two guys uh, that are active. Like I actually changed my team name to losing to COVID. <laughs> cause I ain't losing to you. I'm losing to COVID. Right. Um, you, like there's a lot of, there, there's a lot right. of moving pieces. Now, uh, I will... do you think that's maybe the, where you're saying the weeks is just a let's take this week, figure out what we're going to do, and then Absolutely. come back? That, that, that's something that's realistic. Now, this is completely different. Now, a lot of people hear replacement players, and they think about, like, baseball and football. Well, that was a union issue, right? These guys were able to play. This is way different than crossing the picket line. This is completely different. No, no, that. this is you can't this... play, so I got to – that's why you right. have G League affiliates, right? Well, this is what – and when I, when, I, when I think about replacement players, I think about being at a job, Tone. And, Tone, you can't come in today, so I'm going to call Jermaine and see if he can replace you just for today for or today. J- and, and just for tomorrow, see if, we can, see if he can replace you for tomorrow, and you'll be back to work on Friday, which, which works. And I don't think that this is an issue. The quality of play, some people might – Well, you know, let's, let's take a pause there, right, because – I don't know if it was for COVID or for rest or whatever, but the Toronto Raptors played the Golden State. I don't know if I can call them the Golden State Warriors, right? Because they didn't have Steph. They didn't have Wiggins. They didn't. Have, there was like, I think their whole starting lineup was gone. Iguodala was and, out. Yeah, Iguodala was out. Yeah. Uh-huh. And now, granted, the Raptors didn't have Pascal Siakam and a couple of others. But I mean, like they were down 30 at one point. That wasn't mm-hmm. the Warriors versus the Raptors. That was, no. I don't know who it was. It was the, the 905. I don't know who the Warriors G League affiliate is. Right. The Raptors is the nine. It was the 905 versus mm-hmm. you know, whatever they call the Warriors team. Not, not so, a quality of play. Yeah. Is that what you want to watch? Yeah. And here's the thing, though, Tone. That's not something that's going to be ongoing. That's not like, you know, we a got game here or there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got replacement players just for the day. Or we got replacement players for two games. That's not something where we're going to have replacement players for a month. No, uh, like they did in football or like they did in baseball. Of course, you're not going to want to watch that. No, that's why I think that how the NBA has handled this COVID situation, I think they've handled it really well. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was a pause in the season just for a week or so, just to get ducks back in a row and just to get all the affairs back in order. Okay. Well, you know what? There won't be a pause in. Flew and chill. No, We're going to hit not. you up every Wednesday with an NBA edition, every Friday with an NFL edition, and Monday, 8 p.m. live on TikTok. Send mm-hmm. your questions. Here's the thing. I have an idea. I have an idea. So if you've made it this far on the YouTube side of things, you should subscribe wherever it is. I think it's over there, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, subscribe, like, share, whatever. But also, in the comments, put your questions. When you come to the live, 
I'm going to start taking some of those questions that we don't get to. We'll do a little mailbag session on Fluent and Chill. And we're an- we'll answer some of your questions. Mail time. Uh, yeah, oh, I like it. I got to rec- I got to record that and make it a thing. All right. Mail so until time. we're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> starting next week on fluent and chill we're gonna take your we're gonna do a little mailbag session um so send us your questions you could either do it here in the comments or mm-hmm. uh send it to us on the tiktok live 8 p.m on on mondays heck you know what anthony k the letter k at sportsfluent.com you can send it to me too and i'll bring them to the show uh but until next week take it light take it <laughs>